My name is Poncho Willis. I'm 45 years old. I'm from Pagosa Springs, Colorado. I drive a semi-truck for Crossfire, hauling gravel, putting in pads for BP and stuff like that. My wife, Melanie, and myself, we just helped my mother live up, move up to Montana with my father. We were in the transportation business, hauling cars, transporter. And uh, I had my truck parked down in Yuma, Arizona, where we were living. So we were on our way back to go ahead and get back in the truck and continue that. I started out driving in the morning from Dillon, Montana. We were headed southbound on Interstate 15. And uh, we stopped in Dubois, Idaho. We had a hamburger, it was about lunchtime. And uh, after lunch, uh, she said that she would go ahead and drive. I told her I was gonna take a nap, so I just laid over in the front end of the Toyota pickup on the bench seat and was snoozing, taking a short nap. I heard a loud bang. Uh, we had a the rear tire on the driver's side exploded. And then um, the last thing that I can remember is we were going across the rumble strips. Uh, we rolled it about four times. We were both ejected. Neither one of us had our seat belts on. I can remember turning over in the truck the brush and the dirt and the dust going by, and I actually thought, well, it's kind of like when you see a wreck on television. You just kind of roll it back up on the tires and they go again, is actually what I thought. But then when I woke up four days later, it was a little different story. And when I woke up in the hospital, my mom and dad were there. And I knew something was wrong because, of course, I was laying in the hospital. And the first thing I asked, I said, well, how's Melanie? And uh, they said uh, she didn't make it. She was 36 years old when we had this wreck. We were married for about 16 years, and she was always powerful, always positive, always gung-ho, always stood behind you. She was the kind of wife every guy wanted, and uh, that spark of life was just snuffed out in a heartbeat. The pickup wasn't tore up bad. We had a fiberglass shell on the back of it and uh, it come apart and just kind of exploded but that's you kind of expect that but the pickup looked like it was in really pretty decent shape it wasn't uh, crunched up or really gnarled up by any means looks like you could have it actually landed on the four tires so it looks like you could have kind of closed the doors picked up all the trash around it and went on down the road I might have been one of them kind of guys, oh, hell, it'll never happen to me, I'm bulletproof. Well, you know, everybody takes a turn, you know what I'm saying? And it's kind of how you, if we would have just had them hooked up, she, I really feel that she should have still been here. My dad had a really good saying about excuses. He said, Poncho, he said, excuses only satisfies the person that makes them. And I think there's a lot of that out there. If you got your seatbelt on, you're 60 to 80% better off if you've got it on than if you don't. Well, you don't have to be a five beta camper from MIT to figure out that's pretty good odds. So that's the reason that I'm gonna try and always wear mine. If I had my wishes, 
I would hope somebody would gain, could look into my eyes and see what I've been through, the pain that it still causes. Eight years later, they tell this fat boy that time heals everything. Time don't heal shit for me because I live it every day. But if somebody can benefit, say, hey, you know what? That old boy might be fat, but he knows exactly what the hell he's talking about. To me, that's really important. If I can push you over the edge to go. Now, now look at this. This is all we got to do here, folks. This is it. All we got to do is go from here over to here and wait for it to go click. It's a done deal. How in the hell more easier can you get it than that? Can't be done. I hope it helps 10 jillion people out there, but if it'll save one old boy's life, or one old boy's wife, or his little one, that's my main goal here. <laughs>